Hello and welcome to Test Drive Showdown. We're looking at two popular subcompact crossovers to try to figure out which of these new for 24 models might be the right one for you. Over here we have the 2024 Hyundai Kona N-Line all-wheel drive and over here we have the 2024 Kia Seltos X-Line all-wheel drive. These are more or less the same price, they share the same platform and have a lot of the same things going for it but that's essentially where the similarities end. There's no badge engineering between these two vehicles, despite coming from sister companies, there's quite a big difference between them. So we're gonna be going over everything that you need to know if you're in the market for a $40,000 subcompact crossover and which one you should choose. Let's get started. So both of these vehicles run on the same platform. They run the same powertrain. They both have a 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. The Seltos is actually rated for five more horsepower at 195 and 195 pound feet of torque. The Kona, 190 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque. In terms of the differences, for some reason, the Kona is 30 millimeters longer in wheelbase, but overall length, is very similar to the Seltos. Interior space also similar, but we'll get to that in a bit. As configured, these two are only $270 apart. The Seltos is just over $41,000 Canadian and the Kona is just under $41,000 Canadian dollars. In terms of the looks, they are very, very different. Um, as you can see, design language is completely different between the two sister companies, but I think that's just based on um, personal preference. So in terms of feature differences, the Kona actually has a 360 camera and a remote park feature. In addition to that, it also has a 19 inch alloy rims versus the Seltos, which has an 18 inch rim, a power lift gate, as well as fog lights in the front. Now let's jump on inside and talk about the interior. So we will talk a little bit more about the design of the inside as we take these vehicles on the road, but I do want to talk about some of the differences that come on both of these vehicles, because again, they're not just badge engineered. We've got slightly better interior spaces when it comes to the Kona. The rear headroom on the Seltos is pretty much the only thing that's bigger, but everything else on the Kona is just a little bit better, but it's millimeters of difference. The Kona also has dual zone automatic climate control versus the Seltos' single zone, and there's also a two stage heated steering wheel on the Kona. Technology-wise, the biggest difference you'll notice between the two are the 12.3-inch dual displays on the Kona versus the 10 and a quarter inch found here on the Seltos. But that doesn't mean that the Seltos doesn't come very well equipped. We have a head-up display for the driver, rear heated seats, rear air vents for the rear passengers back there, driver memory, and sound activated mood lights. And we'll talk about all the other features that come on both vehicles, but you're getting things like heated and ventilated front seats, all the safety tech that you would expect, including lane keep assist, lane departure warning, blind spot monitoring, and adaptive cruise control. Both have sunroofs and both feature Bose audio systems. So between the two, there's a lot of similarities, but quite a few things that will make them stand out compared to one another. But I think it's important that we hit the road, starting off with the Kona to see how that drives, rides, and feels, as well as how we think the vehicle looks, and then we'll jump into the Seltos and go over the same thing. Okay, now we're in the 2024 Kona. This is a complete redesign. Yep, inside and out, completely new, bigger vehicle as well. Much more comfortable for me, but let's talk a little bit about the design because it is quite different. I don't know if everybody's gonna be on board with it, but we got Robocop lights in the front and the back. We were talking about how the rear tail lights might not be as safe as they should be on some other vehicles, right? Yeah, that's right. I like the front. The daytime ring light is really cool. Definitely Robocop vibes. Um, the rear seems to be a mimic of the front, but in order to do that, they place the turn signals and the brake lights down below. Yeah, and it's not the first time we've seen that from Hyundai. They've uh, they've done and even Kia has done that with some of their vehicles as well. It's just a little too low for our marketplace. If you're in front of a huge pickup truck, they're never going to see those lights. I would prefer the head, the the tail lights to be a little bit higher for more visibility. But overall, I think it's a cool design. It's definitely very racy. And on top of that, you get a big spoiler in yeah. the back. So, yeah. well, <clears throat> and I mean, this is just the end line, right? So it's like the performance <laughs> appearance, not the performance version. But once they actually come out with that uh, full end line, I think it's gonna be pretty cool. But yeah, that spoiler is, uh, it kind of makes the car because this is a little bit more hatchbacky design compared to the Seltos, which is a little bit more traditional SUV. So you do lose a little bit on cargo, but that spoiler kind of makes up for the aesthetic portion, giving the, the rear end a really good look. Yeah, and on top of that, you get a very nice 19 inch rims that 
that you can't get in the Kia Seltos. That's very true, which could take away from the ride a little bit, but again, a little bit better wheelbase on this vehicle. So exterior, pretty good overall. One thing I did notice between the two, it's such a small detail, but the hood on the Kona uses gas struts to open it up. So single hand, open it up and it stays open, whereas the Kia still uses a manual bar to, to keep the hood open. So small little detail like that, but for the most part, exteriors are quite different. Interior as well. I mean, this is completely different from Kona's of past. I like it. I fit in this way better than I did before, but you know, quite a different design. Victor, what do you think of everything going on for the driver's side? Yeah, the interior looks fantastic. I mean, we've got bigger screens now. We've this time around, we have 12 inch screens, both as instrument cluster and infotainment screen. And then on top of that, we get this new four dot design on the steering wheel, which is the new design language for Hyundai. Yeah, and again, this is different from everything else that they make on the market. So you're getting a little bit more sport oriented. I'd say, you know, this is more of a vehicle for say a single person, just because the back seats don't have any features back there. So unless you really don't like the back seat passengers, you might want to look at a different vehicle, but I like the look of it. We got the red striping going through the center of the dash area, dual zone climate control versus single zone on the Kia is also a nice plus to have. But for the most part, I mean, it is a very grown up version of the Kona in the sense that they've just made it better. Yeah, and the new software is a much welcomed change. Um, we've got nicer design, nicer UI, UI, as well as racing stripes when you turn into sport mode. Overall, a good package. Performance, how do you feel it so far? I think it's great. I think it's very very good for the segment. It's got you know close to 200 horsepower. For a car this size, it's almost a pocket rocket. Yeah, it almost is, right? And again, the ride and everything, yeah, pretty comparable to other vehicles in this segment. You know, there's nothing to really write home about. You do feel a little bit more of the road. You do hear a little bit more of the road, but for the most part, pretty much in line with other subcompact crossovers in the market. The transmission is new for 2024. Oh, yeah. This time around, instead of a seven speed dual clutch transmission that was a bit sluggish at slow speeds, especially stop and go stuff, we've got a traditional eight-speed automatic torque converter transmission here, which shifts much smoother, but I wouldn't say it shifts much faster. No, it's gonna be about the same. You're absolutely right. And, and it's better for stop and go traffic. So again, as what this vehicle is designed for, going back and forth to work, school, things like that, more of a commuter vehicle, a family vehicle, you're gonna want something that's a little bit more traditional like that. So that makes sense. And that's the same transmission that's on the Kia as well. So nice improvements overall, but I think we need to get behind the wheel now of the Celtos and see how that compares and figure out which one you might be interested in if you're in the market for either of these subcompact crossovers. Right, we're behind the wheel now of the Kia Seltos. Couple things to note right away when we got in the inside here. We've got sort of like a suede material on the seats on the Kona versus the full leatherette really here on the uh, Seltos. The center console, we get a lot more piano black colors and, and plastic trims instead of a flat matte plastic trim, which to be honest with you, I think this Seltos looks more premium than the Kona. I, I would agree with you there because the yeah, this again is kind of going more towards the traditional type of SUV experience. A little bit more grown up, right, compared to the, the Hyundai, which is, you know, not necessarily boy racer, but because yeah, we, we've said that before about things like the Kona N, and we've had a lot of people that were not in their 30s that were like, oh, I love this car, you know, I'm, I'm retired and this is my favorite car. So, uh, but a little bit more like, fun, right? Like this is, this is a lot more conservative in terms of design, but it is nice. Like, Dual zone climate though would have been a, a bit of an uh, improvement. But aside from that, we've got all the tech that we would really want on this vehicle. Head up display, screens are a little bit smaller, but they're functional. Yeah, and we have a slightly more traditional uh, software um, that you, if you have owned a Kia before, it would be the same across the board. Yep. So jumping into this, it's not really, there's there's no learning curve. You know, you, everything is just there. It's yep. clear and simple and screen is, is, is responsive. And uh, overall, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with the interior of this car, but we're missing paddle shifters for this. Yeah, well, you don't really need them. You do have a, well, you do have a normal shift mode if you wanted to with the, and it's still backwards. It's, it's going the wrong direction here. I talked <laughs> about that in 21. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you do, if you really wanted to put it into full sport transmission, you've got that. I, I don't think, 
many people will be doing it. So yeah. no flappy paddles, no problem. But one of the things that we talked about uh, when we drove before driver memory uh, was something we wanted. It's there. You got a power lift gate, which again could cater to a specific type of buyer. So again, you know, each vehicle offers slightly different tech. Uh, you can't get all the tech on either one of them. Like it's kind of a trade off. So, you know, you're getting one versus the other, but you know, quickly exterior wise, this is obviously a much different looking vehicle than the the Hyundai Kona. This is again, a little bit more conservative, no full length Robocop lights. They're almost like <laughs> Robocop sunglasses because it only goes to the center. Like, you know, it's almost like a, a bit of a nose in between both front and back, but I think it's still very handsome looking. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think this is a very nice looking SUV. It's traditionally very, very pretty SUV. Mm -hmm. um, you've got your standard tail lights that are not two separate uh, pieces. Uh, headlights also the same thing you've get you, you get a little bit of the modern touch with the light bars stuff like that but overall i think this is more catered towards you know convenience and and comfort and the kona is more catered towards a little bit being a little bit more sporty uh, attracts a little bit of a younger demographics yep. stuff like that and plus like we were talking about uh, when i did the interior portion of this because the rear has heat and vents in the center you know both the outboard seats were heated and then you've got the vents for airflow a little bit better if this is going to be a family vehicle so for example i actually like my daughter when it's uh, she's driven around in the Kona, she she's actually she she hates it. She's like I hate driving in this car, Daddy, because I don't have heated seats back there. So we take the Seltos out. She's a happy camper, not so much in this. But yeah, again, they're a bit of a trade off there between both vehicles. We talked about the drive and all that. It's identical. I mean, I if if I was actually thinking if you could blindfold me and throw me into either vehicle and film it, I wouldn't be able to tell you what the difference is because they really do drive identically right yeah i really don't know where that five horsepower went because it feels the same to me <laughs> yeah. um it's it's got the same engine and the all-wheel drive system works quite well as well um it's obviously a front biased all-wheel drive system but the rear kicks in as soon as it detects any traction or when you're using more of the throttle absolutely and when the only real not even mechanical difference but the profile difference between the two drive modes between cars this one has a, a smart mode whereas the kona has a wet mode or a snow mode so uh, i think they're probably going to operate pretty similarly but you know if i were to decide between the two i would probably want to have a snow mode versus a smart just because we get yeah. kind of bad weather here and you know, we always recommend going with winter tires in winter anyway but it could help so it's not not wet today i mean obviously it's been raining here if you take a look at the b-roll but it's not snowing so we can't test that specific feature but we got to figure out though which one to take and why and maybe why somebody would, would pick one of those over the other so victor if you had a forty-one thousand dollar check in your bank ready to, to purchase one of these vehicles is there one that stands out more to you you know what i came into doing this review thinking that I would always pick the Seltos over the Kona because it's just a little bit more traditionally looking and it's got power lift gate but after driving it and, and talking about it and looking at it for a while you know spending some time with it I'm very indifferent between the two I I, I think you know I might be subject to the to the boy racer in me and and, and getting the Kona oh, yeah. And you know, that's kind of what I'm leading towards too. And the, the main reason I'm leading towards the Kona as a large person, I don't fit quite as well in this. I'm almost maxed out on the height, but also I, I typically find that my arm has to sit on top of the door card here. Whereas in the, the Kona, I actually fit a little bit better. My arms can sit a little bit more comfortably while I'm in the driver's position. So just from a basic comfort perspective, I would take that. However, if I decided to lose weight and was a little bit uh, more of an average size, I would take this just as a family person. Like I said, it's it's better for my daughter in the back seat. She's a lot more comfortable having those creature comforts back there. And personally, I like the styling on this. Like it doesn't stand out as much. And Pluton Blue, this is the one to go with. I love this color. I know everybody's picking it, but it's so good. I like it. So you can't get that on the Kona. There are some dual, uh, you know, like, uh, two-tone color options for it but i like i like the look of this a little bit more so it's it's a tough one like if it's my money i'll take the the seltos for sure yeah ultimately with that being said these two vehicles operate very similarly and you can't go wrong with either one good points yeah and that's why it's so good to be doing these videos because 
you know, we've done a couple showdowns on, on subcompacts before. These really are the only two that offer this amount of power. We're pretty much at 200 horsepower here without going into a proper performance model. Almost all the other vehicles yeah. in the segment are like 150. So it's And good. it's still good on gas. Yeah, actually, so, that's a good point. We, we forgot to mention that. The uh, Kona did our test loop in 7.1 liters per 100 kilometers. The Seltos did it in 7 liters per 100 kilometers. So you factor in weather and things like that, pretty much identical. So fuel economy is going to be the same between the two and 7 liters per 100 kilometers. To fill this thing up was like 30 bucks. Yeah. Pretty good. So I think that pretty much does it for our showdown. As always, if you have questions about this video or the vehicles that we featured, please get back to us in the comments. Let us know. We do our best to get back to everybody who leaves a comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel as well. And until next time, take care. Thank you for watching.